Logan David Wine presents Jan Murray, starring in Dollar a Second. Hi, folks. I'm Ken Roberts. You know, last week we had the pleasure of introducing to our audience Dagmar. And uh, right after the show, Dag and Jan had a glass of Morgan David wine. Well, she really enjoyed it. Of course, that's not surprising, because most folks do enjoy Morgan David wine right from the very first sip. You see, usually they don't know quite what to expect. Morgan David wine tastes so different from any other wine. So for folks who have uh, never tasted wine or don't care for ordinary wine, the very first taste of Morgan David is always a pleasant surprise. And uh, it's a pleasant surprise for wine lovers, too. You'll see what I mean the very first time you try it. Because when you do try it, you're going to get a whiff of that cool, refreshing Concord Grape Bouquet and the taste of fresh, juicy Concord Grape. And Right away, you'll know that here is the flavor you have been waiting for. A flavor like nothing else you've ever tried. See for yourself. Try Morgan David wine and see how good wine can taste. But as you know, friends, Jan Murray is on vacation tonight, but standing in for him is one of television's most glamorous stars. And here she is right now, Dag Barr. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here for Jan Murray, who's away on vacation. And Jan, dear, if you're watching, don't be nervous. I'll do the show the best I can, honey. As a matter of fact, any woman can spend a dollar a second. Isn't that right, ladies? Isn't that right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mogan David Wine is very happy to give someone a dollar a second. Uh, Ken Roberts, who's our first contestant? Jan, I'll... Jan, do I look like a boy? No, you don't look like Jan. You look to be just like Dag. Believe me, Dag. Thank Clark. you. Our very first contestant tonight is our holdover contestant from last week, a tropical fish dealer from Buffalo, New York. Ripley Murray is his name, and when he was here last week, he had been with you for 26 seconds, and he has accumulated two correct answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. Uh, before we do anything, dear, I think it's only fair to tell you I'm not Jan Murray. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, you know how we play our game? Uh-huh. As long as you stay up here with me, you get a dollar a second. Now, you can quit any time you like. You can stop any time you want to or stay up as long as you like. Remember, you're getting a dollar a second. Okay. But there's one way you can lose all your money. You're competing with our outside event, over which we have no control. What's our outside event for this evening, Tom Reddy? Well, Dagmar, our outside event tonight concerns this gorgeous chest of Easterling Sterling Silver. Six service settings in the familiar and beautiful rosemary pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? And our outside event also concerns a young honeymoon couple, Mr. and Mrs. Peter McEntee of Broad Channel, New York. How are the McEntees tonight? Fine, thank you. Good. Well, now, I want to tell you something, folks. You may be the proud owners of this beautiful set of sterling silver before this program is over tonight. And I'll tell you exactly how you may be. First of all, I'm going to shut the lid down on the chest. And I'm going to take this chain here and put it around it, and take this lock, and hook it to the chain, thereby sealing up this chest for the present. And all you have to do is to take this key, open this lock, open up the chest, and the set of silver is yours. Now that's pretty simple, isn't it? There is one little drawback I should tell you about. I'm gonna put that key there. The drawback is this. These are 500 similar keys, you see. But none of these others fit the chest. Just the one that I put on there first. I'm gonna mix them up here good for you. Now your idea now, of course, is to pick out the right keys, open up the lock, etc. Now it may be the first key that you choose, it may be the tenth one, or it may be the one hundredth. But Dagmar, if and when they find the right key in this file and open the chest, that'll be your outside event for tonight. And if your contestant is still on stage at that time, he will, of course, lose all the money that he has accumulated, okay? Thank you very much, Tom Reddy. You understand that? Sure. I'm glad you do, because I don't know a word he said. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. Uh, is the uh, Mogan David clock ready? Yes, it's all ready, Dagmar. Is it? And it's set at 26 seconds. 
Uh, 26 seconds from last week, is that right? That's right, Danny. Now, at the sound of the cash register, honey, you'll make a dollar a second. Okay. Just don't say anything, honey. You'll make a few dollars already. <laughs> uh, Chris, may I have that egg, please? Thank you. You see this nice, fresh egg? Uh-huh. Don't do anything with it till I tell you. Take this, darling, and put it on the floor. You are so helpful, Chris. Thank you so much. Now, all you have to do, dear, is step on that egg in 30 seconds. Does that sound simple? Yeah, sure. Just to make it a little more difficult, we're going to blindfold you first. Uh -oh. Would you blindfold him, please, Chris? Blindfold him. You can't see, can you? Uh-uh. Can you peek? You can't uh, see it all? Nope, not at all. Who am I? I'm Jan Murray. <laughs> I want you to sit down here in this chair, dear. Now, I want Chris to turn you around a little bit, just so you'll lose your sense of direction. All right? Now, Chris, you go ahead and turn him around a few times. Right ahead. Okay. Stand up, Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray, yeah. you have 30 seconds to step on that egg, or you have to pay a penalty. Go. <laughs> but you did a beautiful mambo. <laughs> thank you so very, very much. Uh, thank you, dear. He does everything around here, doesn't he? Thank you so much. Uh, how long has our contestant been up here, Ken? 124 seconds, Dagmar. That means you have $124. Now, you can quit now or you can stay here and keep making a dollar a second. Now, remember, that couple is still down there looking for that key. So what do you want to do? I'll stay. All right, with me, honey. <laughs> All right, we have a new game now. Don't you peek. I, you don't have to turn that far okay. away. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. <laughs> I'm very talented. <laughs> He's blushing at his age. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you the names of some famous married women. Uh -huh. But they're better known by their maiden names or stage names. And that's the answer you have to give me. For instance, if I say Mrs. George Burns, you'd say Gracie Allen. That's right. Let's try it. Mrs. George Burns. Gracie Allen. That's correct. Uh, now we say Mrs. Dick Haynes. Rita Hayworth. Mrs. Vic Damone. Uh, Pierre Angeli. Mrs. Lex Barker. Lana Turner. How could you miss that? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Jack Benny. Uh, Mary Livingston. Mrs. Tony Curtis. Janet Lake. <laughs> Mrs. Tommy Manville. <laughs> Any answer will do. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Desi Arnett. Uh, Lucille Ball. Mrs. Harry James. Betty E. Grable. Mrs. Leo DeRocha. Uh, Lorraine Day. Mrs. Sketch Henderson. Faye Emerson. I think he knows these women better than they do. <laughs> Mrs. Gary Merle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nothing happens. Nothing happens, honey. Well, that was Betty Davis, and oh. you have to pay a penalty. Bless your little curls. <laughs> now, we're going to have some fun, honey. We're going to throw snowballs at high hats like kids do in the wintertime. All right? Okay. Will you open the curtains, please, boys? Come right back here, dear. Now, as you can see, we have hats here from one to five. You see that? Uh-huh. You see this uh, bucket of snowballs? Yeah. Now, all you have to do, dear, is pick a number. After you pick the number, you take a snowball and you knock that hat off. Now, honey, four of those hats, if you knock them off, nothing will happen to you. But if you knock off the wrong hat, there's still a man in one of them. <laughs> and if you do that, he'll come out and knock your hat off. Where is your hat, by the way? He'll knock your hat off, and he won't hit you with a snowball, though, dear. He has a gun filled with whipped cream. <laughs> so lots of good luck. What number do you okay. want? Uh, three. Three? And don't you throw it till I say three. Till I count to three, all right? Okay. Take a snowball. You can get over a little closer. One... Two, three. <laughs> a Yogi Berry, you're not. Here you are, honey. You can get over a little closer. <laughs> you're not cheating. You can get closer. It's all right. Well, wait for you to count three. Oh, I'm sorry. He's smarter than I am. <laughs> One, two, three. You're safe. Give me a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> I was worried. I was worried too. Uh, Ken, how long has 
our contestant been up here? 324 seconds, Dag. You now have $324. You can quit now, or you can stay here and keep making a dollar a second. But remember now, that couple's still looking for that key in the chest, so what do you want to do? I'll stay. Thank you, darling. All right, and we're going to do the same game. Mrs. Alfred Lunt. Oh, uh, same game. Lynn Fontaine. Mrs. Steve Allen. Audrey Meadows. Mrs. Tex McCrary. Oh, wait a minute. I made a mistake. I got it mixed up. I didn't read the papers today, you know. You have to pay another penalty. Come back oh. here, my dear. What number do you want now? Four. Four. Have a snowball. Will I count to three? One, two, three. But we have to stop playing the game with you that you get the money for every second you've been up here. Uh, Ken, how long has our contestant been up here? 371 seconds, Dagmar. How many correct answers did he have? He had 16 correct answers. Oh, how much does that make? That makes $387. $387? <laughs> yeah, $87. Thank you, darling. You're so smart. I'm quick. Bless your little mind. <laughs> Honey, Mogan David Wine is very happy to give you $387. Thank you so much for being out Thanks a lot. He was wonderful, wasn't he? Thank you very much. Ken, who's our next contestant? Well, Dagmar, before we meet our next contestant, there's a new tune that's bound to become popular, and we'd like you to hear it right now. Keep your family and your friends to a taste of days gone by. There's Mogan David, Mogan David, Mogan David wine. It's the home sweet home wine like Grandma used to make. There's Mogan David, Mogan David, Mogan David wine. Many families have found they enjoyed the taste even more when Mogan David is chilled. Kept in the refrigerator, Mogan David not only tastes best, but it's mighty convenient too. Always handy to serve at mealtimes, when playing a friendly game of cards, or as a treat while watching television. And, of course, guests never catch you unprepared. Why not keep a decanter always handy in your refrigerator? Enjoy the deeply satisfying homemade flavor of Morgan David wine often. It's a home sweet home wine like Grandma used to make. Serve Morgan David, Morgan David, Morgan David wine. Now, Dagmar, here is a college student from Colby College, Maine. His name is Peyton Sawyer. How do you do, Peyton? So nice to have you on here. They wouldn't let me wear a bathing suit. <laughs> Thank you so much, darling. Uh, now, pardon me just a minute. Before we begin, Peyton, you know how we play our game. Mm -hmm. Before we play our game, I'd like to check with Tom Reddy how our outside event is coming along. Tom, ready? Well, Dagmar, as you can see, the folks here, the Mac and Tees, have tried a lot of keys, but not a single one of them would open the chest, so that lucky one is in there someplace. And folks, you're such a nice young couple, we'd sure like to see you win this chest of beautiful Easterling silver tonight. I'll tell you, we're going to let you continue the search. As a matter of fact, we're going to do better than that. We're going to let you start all over again. So I'm going to take these keys that you have already tried and mix them in with the pile over here, and you can start all over. And if and when they come up with the right key, Dag, we'll let you know right away for the outside event. Thank you so much, Tom Reddy. You know, honey, I love a crew haircut. <laughs> Feels just like mink. <laughs> Before we start the new game, uh, is the Mogan David clock ready? Yes, Dagmar, it certainly is. It's all ready. Is it? Now, honey, at the sound of the cash register, you'll okay. get a dollar a second. <laughs> he was so confused, he almost forgot to do it. Here's your little thing. I have to tell you what to do in a minute with that. Now, I'll name some, I'll name some vehicles. <laughs> Somebody out there sounds like Jackie Leonard. <laughs> uh, I'll name some vehicles, and you have to... Don't you... You have to watch everyone, you know. Uh, you have to give as many beats on that horn as the item has wheels. For instance, if I say a roller skate, you beat four times. Try it. <laughs> Thank you. 
If I name an item with two wheels, you beat twice. A demonstration? <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> I have to watch it. He goes to college, you know. Uh, but if I name an item with no wheels, don't beep at all. And, and I'm referring only to the wheels that the vehicle travels on. Mm -hmm. For instance, steering wheels don't count. Okay? Right. All right. Automobile. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> Perambulator. <laughs> How do you like that? And I've been making coffee in it all the time. <laughs> You learn a lot on this show. Uh, rickshaw. We pronounce that rickshaw. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> All right, darling. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bicycle. <laughs> Tricycle. <laughs> Popsicle. <laughs> I would have to get a college student, wouldn't I? <laughs> Momsicle. I guess that's a couple live on a bicycle. Really? Uh, unicycle. No. Or sickle. No. Unicycle. No, no beach. Honey, you have to pay a penalty, darling. It's one beat. I'm very sorry, darling. You have to pay a penalty. <laughs> you beeped a little too late, honey. You got to watch your beeps at all times. <laughs> now, what you're going to do. You're going to be an air raid warden for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's be the watchtower. Come back here with me, dear. This is what happened to the stool I used to sit on, I guess. Sit down, darling. Now, all you have to do is keep a careful lookout for enemy aircraft. Mm -hmm. All we're really worried about is flying saucers. Whoops. Whoops is right. So you just sit here and keep a careful lookout for flying saucers. Now, here are five guns. Would you come out here, darling? Thank you. You don't have to take one yet. I'm afraid of what you might do with it till I leave. <laughs> now, anyway, you can pick whichever one you want. Now, four of them work just fine. And when that mean old flying saucer shows up, I'll say, ready, aim, fire. And you'll shoot at the flying saucer, and it will scoot right back to Mars or Jupiter or wherever it came from. Mm -hmm. But one of these guns hasn't got any little old bullets in it at all, honey. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to pick that one and shoot at that flying saucer, well, they're going to shoot right back at you with stereoscopic, periscopic, Forget it, honey. It's just 10 gallons of ice cold water. <laughs> I couldn't help it. That's what they gave me. Uh, which gun do you want? Number four. Number four? Now remember, don't shoot until I tell you. I think I hear those little old Martians coming now. <laughs> Five seconds, Dagmar. That means you have two hundred and forty-five dollars. Now you can quit now or you can stay here and keep making a dollar a second. But oh. remember, darling, that couple's still looking for that key, so what do you want to do? Stay. Watch it, honey. <laughs> okay, dear. You never know, you know. All right. Uh wheelbarrow. <laughs> Lawnmower. <laughs> Tandem. Tandem. T-A-N-D-E-M. You're wrong, darling. It's a two-wheel bicycle built for two. You made a mistake, darling. I'm very sorry. You have to pay another penalty. Come back here. Now, what gun do you want? Number two. Number two? All right. Get that saucer ready. Let her go. When I say ready, ain't fire. I think we should. Don't you, Ken? Yes, I do. How long has he been up here now, Ken? He's been up here 340 seconds. Oh. 
Honey, you have $340. You can quit now or you can stay here and keep making a dollar a second. Don't forget about that couple down there with the keys, though. What do you want to do? Stay up. Right up there. You know what you're doing now? Oh, I think so. You better, because I don't. All right. Uh, taxi. <laughs> Softy. <laughs> Nasty. Nothing. Uh, sorry. Honey, it's four. I'm sorry, darling. Uh, it's four. You've got to pay a penalty. Come right back here, darling. <laughs> what gun do you want, darling? It's five? Okay. You got that flying saucer ready, boys? Let her come. Eleven seconds, Dagmar. You have four hundred and eleven dollars. You can quit now, dear, and you stay here and make a dollar a second. Don't forget about that couple. What do you want to do? Dear, I'll stay right here. You want to stay right here? What can you do, audience? Can he stay? Uh -oh. Honey, you know what that means? I think. Oh, watch out! You know what that means, darling? That means our outside event has come in. That couple uh, found that key. I feel bad about it as you do. I'm very happy for that young couple down there, but that means you lose all your money, but you get some money for all the correct answers that you had, you know? But Should you I check on the outside event first? First, I'd like to know this. Uh, how many correct answers did he have? He had uh, 13 correct answers, Dagmar. Well, let's check on the outside event first. Tom Reddy, tell us what happened down there. Well, Dagmar, these folks uh, tried about 175 keys, and they finally hit the right one. The lock opened, the chest opened, the silverware is theirs, and that was the outside event. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you young people down there. I'm sorry, but you only had 13 correct answers? That's what he had, Dagmar. Can we give him $20 an answer or something like this? Well, Dagmar, if we give him $20 an answer, I think that he'll get more money than he would have gotten if he hadn't come well, into the outside of bed. <laughs> well, uh, how about, uh, if we give him $100, how much a correct answer would that be? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I'll... <laughs> oh, I would say about um, $7.80. Isn't he smart? <laughs> Honey, Morgan David Wine is very happy to give you $100. And thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm okay. sorry you lost the other money. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't he a nice boy? He was so sweet. And he almost, you all told him to quit, didn't you? Well, he didn't do it. What can we do? Uh, who's our next contestant, please? Well, uh, Dagmar, before we meet our next contestant, I'd like to remind the folks that... Uh, when you keep a decanter of Morgan David Wan in your refrigerator, you're all set for a lot of pleasant days and evenings. You see, folks who keep Morgan David Wan in their refrigerator can enjoy it with meals or between meals. Lots of folks find that a glass or two of Morgan David Wine tastes particularly good with cookies or with cake or with sandwiches. And if you really want to end the day with a smile, well, you ought to try a Morgan David nightcap just before you go to sleep. Believe me, there's just, well, there's nothing else you can think of. No other wine, no other beverage that tastes just as good as Mogan David wine. Why, you can actually taste the flavor of those juicy Concord grapes in every single glass. So, next time you shop, look for the Mogan David wine display. And uh, even if you don't see it, be sure to ask your dealer for the original, genuine Mogan David wine in regular size decanters or on the big half gallon or gallon bottle. That's M-O-G-E-N-D-A-B-I-D. -E Mogan David Wine. And now, Dagmar, we're ready with your next contestant, a sales representative from Trenton, New Jersey. He's here with his wife. Here they are, Mary and Bill Ryan. So nice to meet you both, and I'm so glad you came on. Uh, I know you know how we play the game. You've seen the yes, show? Definitely. Before we start the game, I must check with Tom Reddy to see what our outside event is going to be now. 
Tom ready? Well, Dagmar, we have a, a new beautiful chest of Easterling Sterling Silver, and we have another young honeymoon couple with us, Mr. and Mrs. John Cappiello of Brooklyn, New York. I am now locking up the silver, and these folks, of course, have, have seen exactly what the uh, object is to do. So there is the key, folks. I'm going to pour the other 500 keys on top of it. You have to find the right one to open the chest, and once again, Dagmar, if they do it, I'll let you know immediately for the outside event. You sure let us know last time. Thank you very much, honey. That was very nice of you. And uh, Ken, is our Mogan David clock ready? It's ready all over again for you, Dagmar. Is it? At the sound of the cash register, you'll be making a dollar a second. Uh, by the way, uh, how long have you all been married? Ten years. Ten years? <laughs> I wanted to ask that. That gave you a few dollars already. Okay, now we'll get to the game. Don't go away. I won't hurt you, dear. <laughs> I won't hurt him. <laughs> now, here's... <laughs> well, dear, thank you, Dan. Thank you, honey. You have excellent taste. <laughs> With both of us. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, here's a little game that was... You're looking. Here's a little game that will show you how many celebrities you know. I'm going to read a list of celebrities' names, but they'll be all mixed up. Why should there be any different? I may have the first name of a male celebrity and the last name of a female celebrity, or vice versa. Now, when I read a mixed-up name, you must give me the correct name of the female celebrity, and you must give me the correct name of the male celebrity. For instance, if I say Gregory Stanley, you would say Barbara Stanley, and you would say Gregory Peck. Yeah. Okay? Right. Is right. it clear? Sure. I don't know if it is or not. I think it is. <laughs> All right. Zaza Burrell. Zaza Gabor. Milton Burrell. Right. Debbie Curtis. Debbie Reynolds. Well, Tony Curtis. I'll right. Take, I'll take that one. Right. Uh, Itzio Russell. <laughs> Russell. Well, that's all right. It's Jane Russell, but that's all right. And what's yours? Andrea Pinta. Right. Uh, Lauren Brando. Brando. Lauren Bacall. Uh, Marlon Brando. Edward G. Colbert. Colbert. I call that Colbert. Edward G. Robinson. Right. Uh, Tony Blair. Janet uh, Blair. Tony Curtis. Wrong, darling. It's Tony Power. Uh, oh, that's all the time we have for this evening. Probably just a minute. Ken, how long has our contestants been up here? 103 seconds, Dagmar. That means you have $103. You can take that money now, or you can back and be our contestant the first thing next week. What would you rather do? If you're going to be here, yeah, I'd love to come back with you. Thank you. No, Mr. Murray will be here, and you'll like him just as well. He's a very nice boy. Uh, would you rather take the money, or would you rather come back? Come back. You want to come back? Yeah, we'd like to come back. Well, thank you so much. We'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. That's all the time we have tonight. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Same here. I know you'll all be looking forward to seeing you next week. Thanks a lot. How was our outside event coming along, Tom? Well, Dagmar, they tried and tried. They tried about 25 or 30 keys, but they just couldn't find it. They couldn't? Well, you were very nice. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone for helping me tonight. Would you tell... Do I have to say goodbye now? He'll tell you next week on how to be, become a contestant. Ladies and gentlemen, I really enjoyed the show, and uh, you'll be happy to know Jan's coming back next week. And from Mocha David Wine, good luck, and God bless you all. Good night. Presented by Mogan David Wine. Produced and bottled by the Mogan David Wine Corporation. Chicago 32, Illinois. Models gown by Trichet. Donald II is conceived by Jean Paul Blondeau and Jean Jacques Ducat. Directed by Martin Mackler. See, you asked for it on ABC television.